plants and their flowers can be confusing. And one of the most common mistakes is mixing up the male and female structures. So we're going to go through the parts of the flower and how plants reproduce step by step. Let's start with the structure of the flower. Now this is the male part, or stamen, and it produces the male sex cell, pollen. And the pollen is made in here, in the anther, on the top of this filament. And this is the female part, or carpal, and it produces the female sex cell, or egg, in the ovary. Can you draw and label the structure of a flower, as this is the kind of test question you're likely to get? So the sketch of your flower would look something like this. The petals, which can be brightly coloured, and the sepals, which protect the bud. The other main structures you should have drawn are the male part, or stamen, and that is made up of the anther and the filament. The female part is called the carpel and is made up of the stigma, style and ovary. And in the ovary is the ovule which contains the egg. So how does the male part of the flower fertilise the female part? Now in flowering plants, sexual reproduction takes place in two stages. The male pollen has to reach the female stigma. And this first part of the process is called pollination. Now, plants can pollinate themselves, and this is called self-pollination, but most of the time they don't. Mostly, the pollen travels from one plant to another and pollinates that, and this is called cross-pollination. But how does the pollen get from one flower to another? There are two main ways that pollen travels from flower to flower, either by the wind or by insects. Wind-pollinated flowers have dull, tiny petals and no scent. The anthers hang outside the flower, shedding pollen that's dispersed by the wind and is picked up by the feathery, sticky stigma. Insect-pollinated flowers are scented and have brightly coloured petals to attract animals, and the sex organs are inside the flower. Write down two differences between wind and insect pollinated flowers. If you're not sure of the answer, why not rewind the last clip and make a note of all the differences between wind and insect pollinated flowers? Or if you think you know, stop the tape and answer the question by making your list. Your answer could start with wind pollinated flowers having dull green petals and no scent whereas insect-pollinated flowers have brightly coloured petals and scented flowers. And your second difference, wind-pollinated flowers have their anther and stigma outside the flower, but in insect-pollinated flowers, the anthers and stigma are inside the flower. So that's pollination, but what happens after that? The flower is pollinated and the pollen lands here, but it still isn't fertilisation. The nucleus in the pollen still has to reach the nucleus in the egg, down here. Now, the pollen grows a long tube, like a long straw, which funnels the nucleus to the egg. Seen under a microscope, these pollen grains are germinating. Pollen tubes are growing from the pollen grains. The nucleus from the pollen, the male gamete, passes down the tube on its way to the female gamete, where they will fuse and fertilisation will be complete. The flower contains the structures for sexual reproduction in plants. Sexual reproduction is the joining together of male and female gametes to produce offspring. A gamete is the reproductive cell with half the plant's genetic information. Let's summarise reproduction in flowering plants. We have pollination. Pollen from the anther lands on the stigma of another flower. 
then fertilization of the female ovule. And it's the ovule that becomes a seed. Seeds come in all shapes and sizes. They're miniature life support systems packed with nutrients to help the growth of the seedling in its early days. But the seed is not the end of the story. For successful reproduction, the plant has another trick up its sleeve. After seed formation, the seeds are then dispersed, either by the wind, sycamore seeds act like helicopter propellers, and the feathery parachute of the dandelion seeds means these seeds are taken further away from the parent plant. Or seeds can be dispersed by animals. The hooks on cleavers attached to animals and hazelnuts are stored away by squirrels.